Hello and welcome back to JPP Japan's Perfect Pens. My name is Richard and today will be another Namiki Emperor review. Today's Emperor is the Namiki Emperor Manekineko by Masaru which was a 2016 release and a limited edition of just 99 pens. Now the Manekineko needs a little bit of explanation to people who may not be familiar with this. This is the Japanese beckoning or inviting cat, which is a cat of good fortune. It is immensely popular in Japan and around Asia, but if you've not come across it before, you might not understand why it's on this pen and why it's important. So I'll spend a little bit more time than usual explaining it just so you have the context and the understanding because as I said this is immensely popular and it goes some way to explaining why this pen is also immensely popular and was in very high demand when it was released. So this is a rounded cap Namiki Emperor which means it's an ebonite eyedropper pen 17 centimeters long section diameter 30 millimeters there's a little bit of macchia on the clip and it sports the two-tone size 50 18 karat gold nib which you can see there with the rhodium highlighting and the main feature of course of this pen is the two Manikaniko cats. So this uses Togidasha Take Makie which is burnished raised Makie 30 stages of production to get to a blank pen and then they create layers upon layer to give the Makie a 3D shape. So if I have a look at the pen here and as I move it around you'll be able to see the light reflecting on the 3D raised macchio. So let's have a look. So just slowly moving it around you can see the raised macchio. There's some places there like on the cat's face as you can see it's not flat. There's various symbols around the pen of good fortune such as the bamboo, there's some pine, there's some plum blossom, there's plenty of coins. I'll talk on those in more detail later but we'll just look around at the moment. There's some Raiden work in the coin box. There's also some nice gold there in the middle of the money chest. And the pines here are done really quite nicely as well. So we'll also talk on those when we get around to it. Um, I quite like those, they're very stylized, but they're, they're quite nice. Okay, so on to the importance of this pen. So the Manekineko is a cat that raises its paw in a gesture of beckoning and inviting. Now in Japan, the forward facing paw that we see is the gesture of come in. It's the reverse of how it would be in Western culture. So sometimes when these are sold in the West, they reverse the paw so the gesture is transparently a beckoning to the West, but that doesn't work in Japan and the Japanese version doesn't really work in the West. So that's why it's different to what you might expect. Now there's the right paw and the left paw and they mean slightly different things. So when you see the right paw raised, it means money, but it also has elements of home. And the left paw tends to mean customers. So actually sometimes you see the cat with left paw, sometimes you see the cat with the right paw. They don't tend to have the cat with both paws raised at the same time because people interpret that as trying to wish for too much. So the other thing to note about these is they originated in Japan, but they are everywhere in Asia. So cafes all over the place, you'll walk in and you'll see a cat with a raised paw and often it'll be mechanical and the paw will move back and forward. Sometimes it's got a little solar panel, sometimes it's plugged in and the paw keeps on moving. And you know, when I first came to Asia, the paw seemed to be towards me because it doesn't look like a gesture to me as a, as a Westerner. And I was trying to work out what that was. So when I understand that's actually come on in, then that makes perfect sense. But it took me quite a few years to realize that. So here are some of the other elements on the pen. So you can see the money there, you can see the pine. You can also see the bamboo shoots and the bamboo leaves. The cat there is holding an envelope which has monies inside it. So that's also a money and a wealth and a fortune and prosperity element. And those are coins around the top. And here, of course, you can see that beautiful bit of Raiden there in the money chest. That Raiden's really nice. It just, um, I, I say this every time we see Raiden, but it breaks it up a bit and it always looks absolutely lovely. So if I unscrew it here, let's take a look at the nib. Okay, here we go. Right, so this is the two-tone 18 karat monstrously sized 50 Namiki nib. 
So 18 karat gold, as I just said, they write smoothly, they have a wet flow, they're controlled by the valve allowing the ink to get into the section or not, and then the Mount Fuji snow cap is the design. So that's what Mount Fuji looks like when it has a certain amount of snow in it in that shape. Um, you can see a little bit of maquillé there at the bottom of the section just next to the threads. And the pen in general is lighter than it looks because it's ebonite. Now if I turn it over, there is some orishi on the back of the feed, as you can see. And how these pens write is, as I say, they are wet and smooth. They're very big, so you can see in my hands here, but I'm a, I'm a very big guy and I've got very big hands. So for me, it's a very comfortable fit. It doesn't weigh too much, so it's actually very comfortable to write with for a long time and smooth. And the nib is huge, so although the nib itself, if you shrunk it down, it, it's reasonably hard because it's so big, it gives it that little bit of bounce. So it's no way a flex pen, but for me, there's a bit of bounce. It's quite easy to get some line variation just naturally without putting much pressure on the pen. Um, like I say, it's not a flex pen. Don't use it like a flex pen, but I do find it very pleasurable to write with, with the proviso that I have big hands and it's a very comfortable fit. And I know people for whom it's not a comfortable fit at all. So if you want to know more about writing with Emperors, I have a dedicated Emperor fountain pen writing sample and review video where I write with three of these nibs and I talk about it. So have a look at that link if you're interested in how they write. So now if we talk more about the pen itself, the cat is actually a Japanese bobtail cat and it's almost always stylized in this manner. So it's not supposed to be a um, whisker for whisker rendering of a cat. Some pens such as the Chink and Cat do give you a cat that looks like a cat and they're more than capable of doing that but this isn't supposed to be that type of cat. So if you're wondering why this cat looks a bit different it's because this is the way the Manikiniko is stylized. Okay, so if we have a look at some of these elements, let's look at this pine. I do like these pine branches. I like the gradation in color between the blue in the middle and the white on the outside. That's very skillful works. And then they put the gold over the top to represent the branches. So I like that. There's also these bamboo leaves. And again, there's these different subtle shades of color. So this pen has an awful lot of work in it which is something that all of the emperors have in common, um, but especially in the color and the gradations of the color. So as you can see this box here, again, there's lots going on in the box. Um, it doesn't stand out as being too punchy. I think the cats, the white cat especially stands out and then the gold cat because it has the white writing on its envelope. Those remain the focal points of the pen but there's a lot going on in the back here. This isn't a boring back at all. Um, like I say, I love these pines and the plum and cherry blossoms are also done very nicely. There's a lot of detail there. You could go in with a microscope and still be impressed at the quality of the work. Now here you see the artist's signature and the Kokokai group signature. Now, as I said before, this is by Masaru and perhaps quite by accident, of all the pens I'm reviewing, um, Masaru is actually the most popular artist between the Empress and the Yukari Royales. Uh, there'll be five Masaru pens, including this one, the Shishi Komanu, the Treasure, the Shiji and the Kailin, the Yukari Royale, Parrot and Peach. And that's before I've even closely examined the 30 Yukaris, which I've also got to review. Um, so there'll be quite a lot of this and maybe later I'll do a review of the same artist and how they render different styles and different pens because I think that would be another interesting thing to do uh, when I finish getting out the majority of the reviews. Now like much Japanese artwork there are layers upon layers upon layers of detail that we don't really have time to dig into. I mean just for example there's different meanings for different color cats. So there's a variety of different colors and they mean different things um, sometimes in different places. So there's always these extra layers, there's always extra meaning to the items on the pen. They are never randomly placed. But as a piece of art, even if I didn't understand the significance of the cats, this is a very nicely balanced pen. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of high difficulty, high detail work, even here in this shot on the back of the pen. There's a lot going on there. I like the way that the golden cat has been rendered in this glossy finish really stands out with the raised hacker macchie. It stands out from the coins which are 
positioned behind the cat and flatter so it really looks like the cats are in front and all this high amount of work means this pen took months and months to make as usual and even if it wasn't a limited edition it would be very expensive and being a limited edition of a very popular thing this is hard to get your hands on okay that was the mannequin echo i hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this content and i look forward to seeing you next time bye bye